All right. I am going to try as best as I can um, because I've already shown <clears throat> on numerous videos and shorts, um, reels as well too, on how to ax out a spoon billet. Um, this being an example, it's a small piece of maple wood, uh, not off the main trunk. Uh, this is a branch, but it's thick enough um, that I was able to actually carve a decent sized uh, spoon billet out of it. A little bit of crank going on right here, not too much. It's just going to be a kind of a longer eating spoon or a bush spoon, but anyway, there's methodology on how to now get this, the spoon, um, out of the rest of this uh, wood. So I'm just going to uh, walk everybody along as we do this kind of thing. So first things first, what you will need is hopefully you guys have a saw or some kind of folding saw or any kind of saw. And there's a couple of key cuts that you'd like to do. Let's remove the axe for a moment. So with here, uh, you don't have to do this uh, whatsoever, um, but you can actually, I'm going to be cutting two small cuts here on either side of the handle and these are relief cuts and what they do is they make it so you'd be prone uh, less prone to accident and when I mean accident I mean as in your uh, axe carrying through and tipping or nicking or the bowl uh, somewhere around here because this is this whole area the neck of the spoon itself is the highest probability for failure right here because this is where everything is conjoining and coming together this is a very key point, so you have to be very mindful about how you ax um, getting to here. So while you don't need to have relief cuts cut into it, um, I prefer to do it. That way I can watch myself because sometimes I'm a little bit uh, heavier handed and I can carry the blade a little bit too far, so I have to dial back kind of thing. So we're just going to go ahead and just do that right now. So the end of the spoon also here, uh, I can take this off. Okay, so that's just the end of the handle, just matching it. Now there's a little bit on the front here as well that I might as well uh, just go ahead and take that off as well. Just really size up your spoon. All of these little things, you know, that you do prior to the actual carve uh, just makes it easier on yourself, you know, lining the spoon up directly as to how big it's going to be right now, because now I'm dialing it down. You know, you're always going down, 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 down into the final product. So you're just removing material enough so it gets to the point where it's an actual object to be able to use. So anyway, that's it. So now I'm going to cut two um, relief cuts, one, two, one, two on either side, and try not to go through um, the handle of the spoon. <laughs> There's one side done. Now go slow. Uh, to myself, that's something that I had to learn because I was going so fast all the time, trying to get through the process as much as possible. But go slow. <clears throat> I'm as close as I can be to the line of where I want to be. Um, but also try to be even. So it's pretty even the whole way around. What can happen is your blade could be on a tilt as you're cutting and you want to avoid that because on one side you can see what's happening and it may look good for you but on the back side because of the tilt you're actually going further than you need to and in essence you can just destroy the spoon uh, or just go way off so for this one I've kept it flat all the way through to remain and I'll just carve the or sorry uh, cut the other two on the other side
<clears throat> so there you go. Uh, it's pretty dang close, very close uh, on that side and pretty close on this side as well too. But that's it, that's essentially it. So now we get to the fun part of axing. And this is typically how I do it. Let's put this saw away. <clears throat> so uh, this is one carving axe that I have, uh, wood tools. Uh, you don't need to get anything high end. This guy, Canadian prices is about $120. Um, if you decide to sh get it shipped out of England, it uh, might cost you a bit more of duty and things like that, but uh, Lee Valley carries these. So I just really banged the hell out of it this morning, busting up some apple. Luckily enough, I have the knowledge to be able to bring back the edge, so that's exactly what I did is I had to bring back the entire edge because there was a big pit in it today, but I digress. Anyway, so how this works is you get the bird's eye view of how I see it. So what's going to happen is you're actually going to be cutting from the tip of the bowl back down towards the handle. What you're doing is trying to eliminate a lot of this material here, and you're going to be cutting through these cuts that you ended up uh, going ahead and putting in here. It doesn't matter, just as long as there's going to be a little bit of um, play at the end of it um, so that you're not going to be slamming into the bowl kind of thing. You'll, you'll, you'll see what I mean. So start off at the bottom. You're going to hit the bottom and work your way up in a rhythm. Okay, this finger, try to tuck up, get away. And you're just basically going to, here we go. Just stripping away. You'll notice that as I'm hitting the actual wood, I'm prying at the same time. Hit, pry, hit, pry. Because a lot of the times you don't need to worry about continually striking. Sometimes the wood is dry enough or the moisture levels will be low enough that you're going to go ahead and strike. And when you pry, you could just pry off that entire piece and save you the time and effort. So there's that side pretty much done. There's still some meat in here, but we're going to get there in a second. Now I'm going to go opposite side and I'm going to be doing from here down. Starting at the bottom. So that's more or less it. Uh, I've gotten pretty close to the handle down here. So now I'm going to get the tips off of here. And all you're really going to be doing is aiming for the side of the bowl downward. And you're going to be rocking this as it goes. So rocking as you hit. So this lightly. And now I'm rocking backwards. That's the cut. Pretty close. It does take time to be able to get to that. Um, definitely takes some time and practice. So I'm going to do the other side as well too. Max has a fresh edge on it this morning. So the tip as well too. As you can see, it's not perfect. So this is kind of something called a guillotine cut where you can go ahead and put the actual spoon down and you're using this as a slicer more or less. So all I'm doing is cutting down into the wood. You can also use the back end if you want to as well too. So it just rounds it off a little bit for you. 
makes it easier. So the last part we have to do is just now get into here. So this is the most important part. There's a few different ways to be able to do this. Uh, there's a few different ways to be able to entire, uh, carve this entire spoon. Um, but for myself, this is kind of how I do it. So one more time, we're going to now be axing from here down. Prior to that, we were axing from the bowl down. We're gonna go this way now. Now you're gonna see how these come in handy. Clean your edge. All right, here we go. I usually kind of bury one right here, right into the actual um, corner of the, of the um, oh my God, the neck of the spoon. Wow, couldn't think of that one. So you can see, I already kind of went a little bit harder and took off a bit of it. Now it's cracked, which is totally fine. But what I want to do is I want to look to see if my ax did any damage back here. And it did a little bit, but I'm going to be carving that off. So that's what I'm talking about is one little tiny swing and the whole thing is over because you've gone ahead and actually nicked it or done something. Um, and then it's pretty much trash at that point, but I'm good to go. I'm just going to dial back on this and just go really, really light. So coming back up the handle, remember that prime method, just burying the ax a bit and lightly prying. See? So now I went ahead and my axe went down one more time, and I think I got off lucky uh, just because that I was not going super hard. But that is the fail rate of when it comes to spoons. Now, there's a way that you can do this way as well, too, because you're not actually going down in to the neck itself. And that way, hopefully, everything should be okay. Now, if you're worried about it, it's going to take care of that little bit just so I don't have to worry about it. And I'm pretty sure it's gone. Okay, so that's that one side. Now I got the other side. Bear with me here. Watch your fingers, go slow, find a rhythm. Okay, and there it is. It served its purpose. I just cracked it and went through. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab this little extra bit. There we go, we're almost done. Now, uh, in order to get this, uh, these corners here, typically you would rest it on, you're trying to get as much uh, sort of firmness underneath it and stability before you go ahead and ax it. So typically you would rest it here. I'll do it over here for the camera. And then you're going back down it again and kind of curling in towards, but take your time, just relax. Sort of just get your eye where the edge is. Small wax. You don't need to go crazy here because in essence you're trying to watch the, the neck of the spoon itself. More or less, that's it. Then I can fix it. There we go. <clears throat> Almost there. And then we got this side. And then one more little thing to do. And that's it. So check out your line of sight. I've kind of found the edge of the spoon itself. Good enough. There. All right, so it's pretty much out, um, super close. Now we still have a little bit to do on the back end here. And as far as I can see, I don't see any major nicks or dings. So I think I should be okay on that. Um, should be okay. So uh, last but not least is you can't leave your spoon like this. Nothing, uh, nobody wants it like this. So this is where you have to make some decisions. So, <clears throat> 
Uh, typically it's going to be a side look. How do you want it to be? Um, you have the ability in the room to be able to play with it. So you can actually have a little bit more crank if you'd like to, and it come upward. You can have it go straight if you want to. You've got a little bit of ability to play with up and, up and down here. Now I'm talking like up and down. That's what you're looking at right now. So the side profile means the up and down. So from here, the crank to the bowl starts right here. I usually typically will go ahead and axe off some of this material heading towards the bowl, and then I'll equally start going backwards kind of up the spoon. To me, that feels really comfortable in the hand, so that's kind of how I shoot for it. But the woods itself will do the talking. So for myself, um, yeah, I kind of just follow the grain and see what happens. But for this guy, it's pretty straightforward. It's maple, so we're just gonna go for it here. All right. In essence, the whole point of attempting to carve a spoon is to use the tools to their fullest. So essentially, what you want to do is you're not pulling your, your axe or sorry, your knife out or anything like that so fast on a real big thick chunk of wood because you're going to bust your hands up trying to make anything. So for this guy, use your axe and get good at using your axe to the point where you're only going to need your knife for so much. So that's kind of how you want to practice and how you want to shoot. So there we go. I think I'm okay with that. I might uh, maybe just fix up this front end a little bit here. A little bit meat to go, but for the most part, that's it. So one more time, once you have the actual spoon out, uh, you're going to be carving from the tip of the bowl down all the way after you make your relief cuts here at the neck. Then usually I take the tip of the spoon off, then I'll turn it around, and then I will come back this way towards the neck of the spoon where it connects to the bowl, clean that out. You'll be left with a ridge. You go ahead and you get rid of that by resting it on the side of the log and lightly tapping it. And then you want to do the back side of the bowl itself, carving forward from the back or the, the top of the hips here all the way down to the tip, and then going back straight down the handle of the whole way. And the reason why you're doing all of that is because you need to understand the grain direction. That's going to be another video. Thanks for tuning in. Remember to subscribe, hit that bell, shoot me a like and a thumbs up, and come on back for the next one. Thanks, everybody.